Good morning, saints. Good morning, good morning, good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming out to join us today as we are presently able to see God and how God's going to be with us this Sunday. You know, we, we are back open, fully open here at Fort Leavenworth for multicultural gospel service. So all are invited to come in. The only requirement we have right now is if you're not fully vaccinated, that you must wear a mask. Everyone else can come back in. We are no longer, there are social distancing if you choose to, but we are able to have full capacity. So everyone needs to come out and join us here at the Fort Leavenworth Multicultural Gospel Service. We are encouraged and excited to see more and more of our church family in attendance on Sunday mornings. Up there on gathering in person, we no longer, as I just stated, we no longer have any need restrictions except mass on the required for not, no, non vaccinated persons. We would love to come see you and your smile every day. As usual, please send any prayer requests you have to Chaplain, Chaplain Brigham. His number is 913 680 7336. You can text or call him. You can also email him at asama.brion.mil at mail.mil. So if you have any prayers, and we also want to say that we, if you have those prayers that you know have been answered, please let us know those too. Because we have to show the world that our prayers truly do work and truly are answered by God. An exciting week is coming up this week. On July 2nd, at 9 a.m., we're beginning 24 hours of prayer. It'll go from July 2nd to July 3rd, 9 a.m. Friday to 9 a.m. Saturday. 24 hours of prayer. Let's take a moment to think about what that means. 24 hours to sit and be with God, to commune with God. We're going to do it right here in, this, um, in the, uh, the room in the back. We'll be where we will be praying. 24 hours. Please, if you want to sign up, please contact Brother Hank Young or Mr. Regina. Oh, I'm sorry, Brother Hank Young. You can text him at 816 582 5191. And as usual, we can go into on Wednesday, on Tuesday night, we have Tuesday night Bible study, so we need as many people come out for that. We are continuing our worship as we go through Bible. Remember, we're part of the beginning of Tuesday night Bible study. We do a trivia. So don't think that you can't come in and listen to the trivia, because we are not going to kick you to the curb or put you down, because you might not know that you will learn something by being questioned. Wednesday night, we have from 6 to 7 p.m. is also prayer time, and also 8.30 before service, we're having prayer. Youth Recognition Sunday will be July 11th at 10 a.m. We'll do this in person. So everyone who has any children, if anything, this year from K-12, please come on and let Mr. Gina know so we can recognize those personnel on July 11th. And of course, as usual, we're always looking for volunteers to serve. Our children's church is back in session. We'll be starting on August 8th. We need as many volunteers as possible. So please come in either before you can volunteer to be in the children's church. We have one thing that you have to do is you have to fill out a request to see what to do a background check on you before you're allowed to be with our children. So please come in and have to fill out that request so we can have more teachers. So more teachers can be in back, people can be in the front, and we can still serve God. Another date to say July 24th and 25th. That's the our revival, our summer revival. Matter of fact, this will be the first one we've had in a long time. So come on out. As, as, the, as the nation is opening up, we want to have a revival. Bring everybody back in the service. So please come out on the 24th and 25th. On the 24th, on Saturday, it starts at 5 p.m. And on Sunday, the 25th, we'll be doing our regular service. The women's will have a save the date for the women's workshop, July 9th and 10th. It will be a meet and greet on July 9th, on the evening of the 9th, with opening classes on Saturday. We'll have worship classes paint and paint and praises. One of the paint and praises is going to be, but I'll probably, probably be great. So ladies, come on out to the women's ministry. The men's ministry.
ministry and continue in their Bible study the first and third Saturday of the month from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. over Zoom. We will start coming back to the service, but right now we're still over Zoom for at least another month or so, but then we'll be back in, per in person. The Zoom login information you can get from the uh, bulletin, but also you can contact Mr. Hank Young. And a good, of course, let's continue to connect with each other. On Monday nights, we'll be have a connect session. The next one, we'll, do, um, we'll continue to have it at 6 p.m. Come on the Zoom, we'll connect. If you can't make it in the service, we'll do our meet and greet on Zoom. And we'll also do some more Bible stuff trivia on during that time period. The teams will continue to do that service on Monday night at 7 p.m. They will continue on, on the first and third Mondays at 7 p.m. over Zoom. Again, music ministry is from 6, I'm sorry, 7 p.m. if you're a musician. They start at 6.30. Come on out and give a glory, joyful noise, gloryful noise to the Lord on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. One of our biggest things that we do here in the gospel service are actually the court level of the chapel service as a whole. BBS is back. TBS is going to be slightly different. Last year was different because we did it kind of online, kind of picked up stuff early. This year will be significantly different. And it will be in person on July 15th, 22nd, and 29th. We'll be doing training for BBS from 1500, from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. in the Frontier Chapel. Team BBS training will be on the 26th from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Actual BBS is August 3rd through 5th. It will be at six locations across Fort Leavenworth. It will be at the Fort Leavenworth Parks here. It will be at the Parks here on Fort Leavenworth. So please come in. And once again, we need more volunteers. So we need to come in, fill out the paperwork. Once the paperwork's filled out, we can get you into these classes and make sure that we'll be taught what we're going to be doing for BBS. Thank you. If you, have any, if you want to volunteer, please contact Mr. Carl Tillery at 913-684-8986. We are still doing digital giving across all across the means, so if you would like to continue to give, you can give across digital means. Finally, remember what our word is. Love God. Love people. When you love God, it's automatic response to be love people. You know, if you do truly love God and love people, even those people that might cause you some strife at times, but those people also. Because we we as Christians are one thing that we're told, two things we're told to do. One to worship the Lord and love, love our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our left and our right. So please love God and love people. That is your announcements. Do we have any birthdays this week? Anybody celebrating birthdays? We'll still give a birthday celebration to those who are celebrating birthdays around the world. Birthday to you. Happy birthday.
house of the Lord. The word of the Lord says, where two or three are gathered, God dwells. Amen? He dwells in our midst. So I'm so thankful that you're here, that you were able to make it out this morning. For those of you that are watching from afar, we're so thankful that you tuned in. And also for those who will watch this later, we're so glad that you decided to worship with us. Um, as Brother Dobson was saying, there are many exciting things happening. Amen. In our midst, ministry, and we'll be focusing on that in the upcoming months, and what our gifts are, and if we're using our talents for the Lord. Um, the month of July, I'm going to kick off, you know, the, and, and I want to lay some foundation here, the purpose of this 24 hours of prayer and fasting is to lay a framework, lay a foundation for our revival services that are going to happen. The word of the Lord says, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And so as we enter into this time, we want to have the right heart, the right mind, the right soul to hear what does saith the Lord. Amen? Let's give a hand clap to the Lord this morning. Invite somebody. Come on, we can't keep what the Lord is doing to ourselves. We want this house to be filled. Bring the lame, bring the blind. Come on, now is where your faith comes into the mix. We preach on it, we talk about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we want to see the Lord in the land of the living? Invite somebody. Glory to God. So we're going to pray this morning for these flyers that are going to go out and, and the usher and Brother Sam to run them back there and, and put them back there after I pray for them. And after we pray, because I'm going to lift them up and I need you to lift your voice also. But these are going to go out and we want people to be impacted and come and worship with us. Amen? Amen. Lord, we stand this morning and pray with me. You might be thinking, oh, well, these are and animate objects. These are flyers. These are paper. Amen. But I've seen God work through flyers. Amen. I've seen God work through paper. Amen. And reaching somebody. Hallelujah. I was in a service one time and a preacher testified that he was about to, before he came to the Lord, he was about to commit suicide. And he was standing on the top, on, on, on a high building, Amen. This is a true story. Standing on, a, on the top of a building and he's talking to the Lord and saying, Lord, if you're real, amen. And guess what happened? God sent the wind with the flyer to a revival service and it hit him across the face and landed right here. Come on now. Hallelujah. Our God is real. Our God is real as a mention of his name. Hallelujah. And he went down to that revival. Amen. And the Lord began to move on his heart. Amen. So what we're doing here is a symbolic. Why do I have to explain this? Because I want you to understand the purpose of why we are doing things and the reason why. Amen. Amen. So let's pray this morning, Lord. We come before you right now. In the name that is above every other name. The matchless name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as these flyers, as these handouts go out into the community, to our neighbors, to our fellow workers, Lord, that you would impact hearts and give them the desire to come and hear a word from you. Lord, specifically designed from heaven, Lord, for a soul. Lord, we lay these out, God, before you. In Jesus' name, and we thank you, and we give you all the glory, and we give you all the praise. Amen, and amen. Clap your hands. Amen. Father, thank you, brother. Amen. If you have your Bibles, 
As the, music, as the singers prepare to come, let's turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 42. Amen. And I'm going to read three verses, and I'm going to sit down, and we're going to worship. <laughs> and it says, it reads as follows, verse 10 through, through 12. Sing unto the Lord a new song. His praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities therefore be quiet. No, that's not what the word of the Lord says. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof Lift up what? Their voice. Come on. The villages, Kedar doesn't have it. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the island. As the Dobson family sings, amen, join with us as we worship the living God. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, church. Come on, everybody. Can everybody say amen this morning? Okay, can you say hallelujah this morning? I mean, there's only one thing God asks you to do is to praise Him today. Can you praise Him today? You know, I know sometimes we gotta be quiet for the places we're at. But you know, we have to understand there's only one thing we truly need. It's not money. It's not cars. It's not a house. It's not a lot of those things we think are important. One thing we truly need and all we need is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When you think about that, compare Jesus and God to your car. Compare them to your house. Which one do you need more? Compare to that job you had. Which one do you really need more? So I'm telling you today, for me, you're all I need, God. You're all I need.
Yeah.
You know, we say that God is all we need. You know, we sit back and we say we got to bless the Lord at all times. But you know, sometimes you need a direction. You need something to bring you closer to get you on that right track. So, you know, it's all about joy. Because what does God do for you? He brings you joy, that peace, that calmness. And he is always the center of my joy. So as we think of this tonight, or this morning, think about who truly is the center of your joy. And where you get that joy from, is it God? Jesus, you're the center of my joy.
bless you, done something for you this morning. Amen. Thank you, Dobson family, for singing. Amen. We have people out of town, as you can see today. But I am so glad that you were here. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am glad that you were here this morning. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, just turn to Saul, Isaiah. <laughs> Chapter 42. Brother, can you close that door for me? Isaiah chapter 42, we're going to go into the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, Jesus Christ being the one who ushered in the New Covenant. Amen. I don't know if you know this, but John the Baptist, amen, was laying away for the Messiah to come, and John the Baptist was one of the last Old Testament prophets. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. You see, when Jesus came, they were still under an old covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. And for many during that time, it was hard for them to understand the new because they were still in the old. Amen. Come on, I think that'll preach. Amen. You can't be in the old life and one foot in the new. Amen. Because you ain't going to understand the new because you got one foot in the old. Come on. Hallelujah. Youth this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that your mom and dad worship the Lord, but what about you? Amen. What about you? Glory to God. Can't make it in on my mom's faith. Amen. I can't make it in on grandmother's faith. Amen. They passed and they're long gone. Amen. Now I have to try to make it in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, you see, you see let, let me tell you something. Amen. And I'm ministering this morning, you know, by the flow of the Holy Ghost. But John, there came a time in John the Baptist ministry where he said, I must decrease and he must increase. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. John the Baptist was saying, wait a minute. Amen. I know I have a purpose and plan for my ministry. But now, this is the one that's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Behold the Lamb of God. Amen. And you know what happened that day, Brother Moore? John the Baptist's disciples went on and followed the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. It's time, church. It's time to get out of the old and into the new. Amen. You cannot put new wine, you know, you can't put new wine in old wineskins. Amen. Come on. You know why? Because the old wineskins will break. If you understand what I'm talking about, raise your hand. Amen. Because in the Old Testament, they didn't have plastic or, 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 uh, uh, whatever, these plastic containers, glass containers that they carried around. You know what they would use to carry around water? Amen. Animal skins. Come on. They lived off the land. And so the moral of that is you can't put something new in something old. Glory. Hallelujah. It's time to come out of that and into the new. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 42. If you can stand this morning, I'm going to read eight verses. And as you're going there, amen. Hallelujah. How many are expecting something new from the Lord? Fresh bread, my daily bread. Behold my servant, 
whom I uphold. 42. From verse 1. My elect, my, in whom my soul delighteth, takes pleasure. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. I don't know if you know, but the prophet here is talking about Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus Christ came to bring forth judgment. Amen. That's not the God we like to hear about, is it? Amen. And he's a just God, right? He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break. And the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he hath set judgment in the earth. And the isles, the islands, shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretch them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. Amen. Three times now we've mentioned Gentiles. Amen. Hallelujah. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Come on, how many of us sat in darkness and he brought us out? Hallelujah. Verse 8. I, the Lord, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your spirit, your presence that is here with us. Lord, we know that you are going to manifest your glory. Lord, and the deaf will hear, the blind will see, souls will be filled. Because you said it so, and you decreed it. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I don't know if you noticed the theme um, last time. Um, throughout this month, I've been preaching on praise and worship. Not what I think is praise and worship. What the Lord thinks is praise and worship. Amen. Um, and that's that's sometimes a hard thing to understand for us believers, right? And why, why is it? Um, because a lot of times we're stuck on tradition that don't line up to the word of the Lord. Amen. It's been quiet out there. But it's time the true believers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. We have to worship God in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Amen. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1 through 8, this is a prophecy of the Messiah. Here, God is using the prophet, the man of God, the vessel, the servant, hallelujah, Isaiah, to talk about the coming of the Messiah. Amen. Hallelujah, which Christ is the Greek word for Messiah. Jesus, when we say Jesus Christ, is Jesus Messiah. That's what we are saying. He's the one that came, the one that was prophesied about, 
the one that was spoken about, the one that God set in motion even before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Isn't that something amazing that God, before he even created the world and the fullness thereof and called things out of it and stretched it forth, he knew that man was going to need a savior. He knew that man would not understand his plan. He knew that man would not gravitate towards God. He knew that man would run from God. He knew that man would not focus their time in God. He knew that man would worship graven images made out of wood, stubble, and stone. Amen. And Sister Lolita, he provided a way even before it was already in his mind, even before the foundation of the world. And we sit here today and don't understand the things that are going on in our life like God is somehow confused, like God is some, somehow afar off, like God is somewhere not knowing what you're going through. Hallelujah. Somebody preached me this morning. Hallelujah. And so, come on, we have to understand that God has it all in his power and might to fulfill in all the earth. Nothing surprises God. Glory. Nothing can happen in this earth without God decreeing it so. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Some of you believe it faintly. Glory to God. So here we have in, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 18 through 20, is the fulfillment of that prophecy of Isaiah. And he talks about how the Lord was not going to cry out in the streets and not make a lot of noise and, 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 and not make a lot of ruckus out there. He was going to go and navigate and heal. And, and those that would see these healings would follow and believe and people would gravitate towards him. He wasn't coming to overthrow Herod. He wasn't coming to overthrow Pontius Pilate. He wasn't coming to do that. He came to bring forth what? Salvation. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on. Glory. The mouth of babes and sons is perfected praise. You see a generation of people, God's people that began to rely upon and worship idols, molten and graven images, things that they made out of their own hands and called it what they wanted to call it and bow down and sacrifice to it. Amen. So I ask you this morning, what have you created and allowed your soul to bow down to above God? Hallelujah. Come on. Glory to God. They had forgotten the one that formed them, that called them out even before they existed as a nation. He called them out. You don't understand the wisdom and the power of God. Before they were Jews, they were Gentiles. And God made a covenant with Abram because he followed God, believed God, Glory. Hallelujah. And in that process of time, and in that communion, and in that walk with God, and in that communion with God, come on, and in that walk, and in that talk, he walks with me, he talks with me, a long life's narrow way, he lives, he lives. Glory to God. Come on, I'm trying to preach to you this morning. God cannot be a far off concept in your mind that you just come here to worship a far off God that you can't handle, that you can't reach, that you can't touch. Come on, for a lot of us, that is our perception of who God is. And that's why it's hard to come to a building. And that's why it's hard and you grumble and you complain because there's no communion. God is a far off in your life. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you can't worship and you can't lift your hands and you can't give him the glory because God is a far off concept. Glory. Hallelujah. He's not. <laughs> Come on. And it's time. Oh, 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 you're being negative. No, I'm trying to help you to understand to get out of your frame. Get out of what you created and your safety and your idols. Get out and step out of that and go into something new. Oh, Lord, help us. Come on. Glory, Abram, Abraham, and we're, we're going to get there. Amen. Hallelujah, Isaiah 40, 41 and 7. Amen. Hallelujah. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smootheth with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldering. And he fastened it with nails that it should not be moved. Come on. Security, not moving. Amen. <laughs> Come on, we're, we like security. We like not to move. Amen. We like the old, but it's a day that we're coming into something new. Hallelujah. Glory. You see, come on, come on, yes, amen. <laughs> He's getting it this morning, hallelujah. He told Abram that he was going to be a father of many nations, even before it even came to pass. Now, now you, you, you have to think about this. Abram is 90 years old. Amen. Look at your wife, look at your neighbor, and say, 90 years old. When God made this promise to him, God that makes promises, come on and fulfills them. A God that never lies. Hallelujah. Glory. He, ne he neither slumbers nor sleeps. Hallelujah. Glory to God. While you're up all night worrying about things, amen, he's up with you. But why not give it your problems to the one who neither slumbers nor sleeps? Because while you're sleeping and resting, he can solve your problems like that. Hallelujah. Glory. Abram, Father, he made this promise to him in Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 through 11. He was going to be the father of many nations and it was by faith but Abram is looking at his flesh and looking at Sarah and looking at he has no son come on he was looking at a lot of times our frame of reference is through what we know what we feel what we can touch but the word of the Lord is above that God is trying to get you from what you can feel and what you can touch into the realm of spirituality, into the realm of faith. He was taking Abram out of this carnal mind into a realm that he would believe God for his promise. Hallelujah. Abram, out of the Ur of the Chaldees, he was Chaldean. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at your map and, and look where Chaldee is right now compared to where Jerusalem is. They were Gentiles. They were far off from the hand of God. They weren't even a nation, but God took them. God birthed them through faith and gave them a name. He changed their name. He changed their character. He changed who they were. He changed their lifestyle. He changed their way of dress. He changed their mind. He changed their appetites. He changed their food. He changed everything. How they drank. How they were supposed to clean when they went to the restroom. Come on. And we come to church and we say, God, don't change nothing in my life. God, just let me be the same. Let me worship you as some far off deity. Come on. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Come on, I'm preaching this morning to you. And God is trying to stir you up and get you out of yourself and get you out of what you know into something new. Hallelujah. We come in the house of the Lord and say, God, don't rearrange that. God, don't touch that. I'm comfortable in my idolatry. I'm comfortable in my own white sins. Huh? So the power of the Holy Ghost this morning. Come on, God is speaking to you this morning. Hallelujah. They say that insanity is doing the same thing over and over with the same results. Hallelujah. While many of us are dying in our faith, dying in what we know, because we don't know it by faith. We know it by what we feel, what we touch, and God operates not in what you know, and what you feel, and what you touch. God operates in a realm higher than you can understand. He moves in, in the realm of faith. When you can't see him, he's moving. When you can't know where he is, Sister Bernardo, he's moving. When you can't touch him, he's moving. You don't understand that he's moving in this place. Oh, I can't feel him. I can't touch him. But he's as close as touching the tip of your nose. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. It's time, children of God. Come on. It's time to take what you know and exercise it. Glory. But what is the desire and what does man do? Amen. Instead of walking by faith, we major in the minors. Huh? Come on. Instead of walking by faith, we complain about this, complain about that, complain about this, complain about that. And God is up here saying, wait a minute, you're down there with the chickens flapping. I'm up here with the eagles trying to get you up here. Huh? And I ain't calling nobody chicken. You're, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. Because I know that thought crossed some of your heads already. Because you're still in the realm of the flesh. And you don't understand what God is trying to tell you this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. See, we have it all wrong. You think that I'm just standing up here blabbing some words, but I tell you, under the authority of the Holy Ghost this morning, I'm allowing, I'm a vessel this morning, and God, the words that are coming out of my mouth, it's like God is saying to me this morning, God is talking to you this morning, get your eyes off the flesh, get your eyes off who I am, get your eyes off anything that has to do with me, because it ain't about me, it's never been about me, it's been about God impacting your life and changing you wholeheartedly. Come on. The Lord said he's spoken it. Amen. The Bible says do everything with decency and in order. He's spoken it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, see, it blew your mind because you think I'm up here by myself just coming up here to talk to you this morning. Come on, it ain't about me. And until you get that, you're still going to be down here flapping. Amen. Until you understand that, you'll be down here eating that feed. Come on, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings.
nature and character. Huh? You know the nature of God. He's loving, compassionate. Amen. God has a personality. You know that? He's loving. He's kind. Amen. He loves you. He cares. He's merciful. He's righteous. But come on, on the other side of who he is, he's God of judgment, God of wrath, God of, come on, hallelujah. We can't just think that God is, come on, just like us as humans. Come on, there's a potential. We were created in the image of God, and we look at the wrath of God as sin. No, that is not sin. Hallelujah. God is God and he calls things what he wants them to call what he wants to call them. Hallelujah. The judgment of God is not sin. It's his plan. Glory. Hallelujah. The nature, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, it's time to get away. Come on, come on, slip away. And to a place where you can commune with the Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> In verse 8, he says, I, the Lord, amen. I, the Lord. Let me tell you about something about that word, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We read it today. But if you go back into what the people of God had, you know, um, one of the Ten Commandments was, Thou shalt not use, say, or use the name of the Lord our God in what? In vain. It's one of the commandments, right? Hallelujah. So guess what? The Jews, when they heard that, the Hebrews, when they heard that, they wouldn't use his name. Only the high priest would utter it once a year when he went in before the holies of holies. Read your Bible. Do your understanding. Do your scripture search. Amen. Study it for yourself once a year. The name of God was not known to the common people. Ah. Uh, it was not known to the common people. It was a sacred name. It was a holy name, and it still is. It wasn't uttered in the streets. It wasn't uttered because they were breaking the commandments of God. And you know what the punishment was for saying the name of the Lord in vain? It was stoned to death. You may listen to me this morning. Amen. And here, we want to use the name of God loosely and call him things he never called himself. Come on! So, uh, I'm losing some of you because you're stuck in tradition. I'm already losing some of you because you can't understand who God is and what he's trying to tell you this morning. That word there is spelled, that word Lord, which the Jews transferred as Lord instead of actually saying his actual name. Uh, was Y-H-W-H. Four countenance, consonants. Uh, that word, you try to pronounce consonants, uh, chants over there, kind of hard to pronounce without vowels. Give me a vowel. That's the exact same. Uh, I lost some of the youth generation. I'm watching them, unfortunately. Don't know who Pat Sajak is. Come on. I like to buy a vow. Guess what? They couldn't buy a vow because God didn't give them a vow to buy. So, constantly throughout the Old Testament, his name was YHWH, unpronounceable, not said because they were violating the Ten Commandments. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we get to the church age. Amen. Come on, then we get to an age where people got away from honoring the name of the Lord. They were so inquisitive and so wanted to name the microwave generation that wanted to know the name of God with no relationship. Huh? See, you guys know me. 
me as chaplain. Amen. But my wife knows me as Anselmo. Uh, I don't let anybody call me Anselmo. Amen. That's a name of relationship. Uh, that's a name. Even as officers, no, I would not in the Air Force. I am chaplain to you. Don't call me Oh No. Call me by my first name because I don't know you. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Guess who's the only one that calls me in Selmo in my house? Uh, my wife. And when she calls me by that, she has my attention. Tap me on the shoulder. Come on. She's got my attention because I know she has something important to say. Amen. I'm losing me. I'm losing some of you this morning. Hallelujah. God's name was known in relationship. Amen. That high priest that went in into the presence of God, not without sacrifice of blood, of bulls, of goats. Uh, and we want to say his name loosely with no sacrifice. Listen to me this morning. Hallelujah. Glory. I, when Moses, when God appeared unto Moses, when he was on the backside of a desert, thinking all hope was lost, thinking that there was no more hope for him, because he tried to be a deliverer in the arm of the flesh. Oh, the why he sins. Huh? Come on. He tried to do it in his own arm and strength and ended up doing what? Killing an Egyptian, which is contrary to the word of God. He ended up sinning against God. And he thought our hope was lost. See, that's what happened when you begin to serve God in the arm of the flesh. You, you think that you are his, what, arm of judgment in the earth. When the Lord says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Come on. That was Old Testament. Moses, come on. New, come on, Moses. Come on, Moses, 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 drawn out. Drawn out of the water. And here he is, and Moses sees a burning bush. Young Moore back there, brother. Young Moore. Hey Amen. What's your name back there? I can't hear you. Yell it out. Nate. Brother Nate. A burning bush. And he goes to see what this burning bush, what's going on. Because this bush is burning and not being consumed. And he draws nigh and hears a voice and says, stop. Don't draw any, don't draw nigh to me. Take off your shoes because the place where you're standing is holy ground. And then there begins, Moses fell on his face before the presence of God and covered his eyes. Amen. And he began to have a dialogue with God. He began to talk with God out of this burning bush. And guess what? Moses, still inquisitive of the, who, who shall I tell the people of Israel? Who shall I tell has sent me? You see, you have to understand before that, before Moses had that encounter with God, God was a far off concept. God was what he heard from mom, what he heard from dad, what he heard from, hey, from family, what he heard taught, what he saw in Egypt. All that was, come on, God was a foreign concept to him until he had a holy encounter with God. You get me this morning? Hallelujah. You understand me? What I'm trying to say this morning. Hallelujah. And he said, what? Well, take off your shoes for the place where thou standest is what? Holy ground. Whom shall I tell the children of Israel? Who, what shall I say when I go into him? What shall I say is your name? And the Lord said, I am that I am. <laughs> you know what he was actually telling Moses? I'm God. 
Uh -huh. God is not the same. Uh -huh. That's who he is. <laughs> Chaplain is not my name. That's just who I am for right now. Uh -huh. Come on. Hallelujah. The people, come on, that know his name. And the name is not revealed, but through relationship. But he tells Moses what? Huh? I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Huh? You know what that, you know what I am means? The one who exists. He told, he told Moses <laughs> to go back to the people and tell them I'm the one, the one who exists. Go tell them that's who I am. Huh? Go tell them I'm the one who exists. I am the one who exists. He never revealed to Moses his name. Huh? Think about that. Hallelujah. You know where the name Jehovah came from? Man's opinion. Look, look, study it out. Don't take my word for it. Go study it for yourself. I'm not speaking out of the air this morning. Amen. They took the word Adonai, which means Lord, the translation of that, and they plugged it in into, in other words, that was man's, come on, old white skins with no relationship. Trying to come up what they wanted. A name for God. When God never revealed his name. Glory. Yeah, I'm going to keep preaching this. You know what? Because some of us don't understand it and need to take the time to understand it. Come on, and when I leave here, you still continue to call him Jehovah, which is man-made. It's not biblical. Do your research. Hallelujah. They took the vows of Adonai and plugged it into YHWH and came up with the word and named God what he never revealed to the people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, many of us confuse God's character for his name. Huh? He's a God of peace, but that's not his name. I'm peaceful at times, but that's not my name. God is our healer, but that's not his name. God is our provider, but that's not his name. Come on, we just celebrated Father's Day. And there were many current characteristics said for fathers. They're good providers. Uh, come on, they do this in the home, oh, they're peaceful. They take the time to be with the children. Guess what? But in all that that you said, it's all characteristics of a father. And father is not a name. It's a title. If you look at my birth certificate, guess what? Father's not on there. Son's not on there. Chaplain's not on there. Major United States Army's not on there. Doctor's not on there. Provider's not on there. Healer, come on, as I allow God to move through me, it's not on there. All that it says is Anselmo Brilliant Jr. We got to confuse this one. Amen. Hallelujah. And you, you can deny this. You can kick against the bricks if you want to. But God will not give you revelation until you're willing to know him for who he is. Not a far off concept of who God is when you walk with him. Come on, Brother Johnson. Come up here this morning. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to lock hands. I mean, when you walk, walk with me, when you walk with him, when you talk with him, when you go with him, when you sit down with him, there's communion and we're talking back and forth. And I need to know Brother Thompson and what he likes and who he is. But until then, I don't know Brother Thompson. Huh? What else do they call you in the home? Come on. Any nicknames? All right. 
us. Hallelujah. You want me to tell you why the disciples understood the story of the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. Uh, come on. Hallelujah. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Peter, no, that's not what it said. At the name of Jehovah, that's not what it said. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Now, I don't know if you understand this, but you don't bow to anybody but who? But God, huh? Can't bow to idols. Can't bow to these things. You can't bow, amen, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. That's hell. Come on. Even the people in hell are going to bow down to his name. Amen. You don't believe what hell is, do you? What is the molten lava of, what is, come on scientists this morning, let's hear you this morning. Come on, hallelujah. Where is the molten lava? What is at the core of the earth? What comes out of the earth when volcanoes erupt? <coughs> molten lava, hotness, amen. Scientists have begun to drill, they tried to drill one time to the center of the earth. And you know what they heard? Screams. People screaming from the top of their lungs, saying, ah! They heard screaming from the center of the earth where hell is. Come on. You don't believe it this morning. Do your research. Thank you for showing up, Steve. Amen. To back me up because my voice is leaking. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is what? Part God. No, we say? No. No, he's not. Jesus Christ is what? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Come on. One God and Father of all, who is above all, through you all, and in you all. Huh? Huh? For well, God is within us. What do we become? Amen. Hallelujah. If God decided to leave his throne, to leave where he was and come in a body and call the Son of Man, the Son of God, come on. Hallelujah. Who are we to argue with that? But we do. You know why? We don't know him in relationship. Amen. I know Sister Lolita. Amen. Hallelujah. But I don't really know her. Brother Sam probably knows her more than I do. You know why? Because they come on, walk, and do things together. Amen. Can't know God by who I just know of her. That's what some of us are. I just know of God. You want me to tell you why? When was the last time you heard his voice? When was the last time you talked with him? When was the last time you walked with him? When was the last time you knocked on his door through prayer? When was the last time you decided to talk to God just because he is God, not because you have a problem or an issue? Come on. Hallelujah. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Come on back. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want.
you to leave the sale. And the sale doesn't take all that. Amen. Yes, it does. Amen. It takes all that to make it in. Amen. Moses was back there, backslidden, minding his own business. Till God called him out. Uh, notice God called Moses by name. Moses. He knows our name. Amen. But Moses didn't know God's name. Because it wasn't revealed to the children. We're comfortable with he knows my name. We're not comfortable in really knowing him. You know why? Because in knowing God, there's surrender. There's a taking off of your shoes. There's a taking off of your pride, your ego, who you are as a person. Amen. What you allow to creep into your life. And that's why this altar is scary for some. Amen. It's scary. You know why? Because we're more so concerned about who's looking at me than being honest before a holy God. Amen. So we're going to sing this last song. Don't let this moment pass you by. I'm not singing that song. You're not going to sing it. I'm just talking to them. <laughs> you looked at me like, what are you saying, Pastor? <laughs> we're going to sing, and then we're going to be dismissed. You need prayer out here. The Lord is here. Thank mm -hmm. you.